always had a fear of the wilderness, which may sound pretty common to who is reading this. Just driving on a highway in the middle of nowhere makes me a bit anxious. Ever since that one summer, I avoided any roads going into deep forests and any invitations to camp with friends. I always stick to the towns and cities, despite their own troubles. It was when I went camping during the summer in North Carolina. I wanted to get away from the noise of the big city and the stress of work. My friend suggested I go there since they said that the forests and hills were beautiful to look at and to take pictures during my stay there. I was living in New York at the time, so I thought it wouldn't hurt to get out of the city for a change. I rented a cabin, as I wasn't going to sleep in a tent. Yes, call me a cheater for not committing to camping, but I didn't feel comfortable sleeping in a tent. Perhaps that saved my life in the end. I packed some things, just the essentials such as bedding, a thermos, and one of those portable stoves, not the large heavy ones where you have to lug around a propane tank, but a small pocket burner with a small gas tank and a little stove top. I drove south, making a stop at a gas station to refill my tank and grab some snacks. I grabbed a bag of chips and some strips of beef jerky. I approached the gas station clerk and the clerk asked, What brings you around these parts? I raised an eyebrow. How did you know I'm not from around here? I just assumed. A lot of people come and go. It ain't the most lively of places. I simply nodded. Yeah, a small town by the highway is probably the quietest part of the world. The clerk, an old bald man with sunken eyes and a yellow smile, chuckled. Aside from the cars coming and going, you'd be right. If you want real quiet, there's the woods down ahead. Say, I'm going camping there. I heard the mountains are nice to look at. Heard they look blue in the sunrise. You going camping there, huh? Well, you city boys are impressed by the simplest things. I just be careful at night. Lots of things out there you don't want to mess with. I scoffed at the thought. Come on. I doubt there's mountain lions or bears in there. I'm sure I'll be fine. Yeah, critters ain't going to bother you much. The clerk chuckled under his breath as if I didn't know what I was getting into. I don't know if you believe in this sort of thing, but people around here don't go into the woods too often because of death song. I doubt anyone knows about the death song, except the people in this small town by the highway. At first, I was curious to hear what this was about. Death song? What is it? Some people say that if you're in the woods around these parts at night, you hear singing of some kind. That singing leads to your death if you don't leave those woods right away. Do you believe in the death song? I asked. The clerk shrugged. Never heard it, but I ain't risking it either. I nodded, indicating that I was listening. I then asked, So what else have you heard about the death song? Some things here and there. A few tell that the death song comes from a singer who made a deal with the devil, or was killed by their lover, and cursed to the woods with her last breath. Either way, it's a ghost of some kind or another. I was interested in the folklore these people have, thinking it was more artistic rather than frightening. I then said, Well, I better not take too much more of your time. I got a cabin with my name on it. Hope you have a nice night over there, sir. 
let me know if you see anything. I got my chips and beef jerky and went back into my car, finishing up on refilling my car's tank before driving off to the campgrounds. When I got there, I was surprised that no one else was camping, and I was the only one there. I guess the people of the town really believed in the death song, and I should have when I arrived there. I parked my car in the lot before getting out, grabbing all of the things from my trunk before trekking to my cabin. It took half an hour to reach the cabin. It was small. When I went inside, it was only a bedroom and a bathroom. If you're wondering about the bathroom, there was plumbing. There was a walk-in shower and a functioning toilet. I set my stuff down and closed the front door, pulling out one of the books I bought for the night, How to Kill a Mockingbird. It was later at night when I started hearing it. I was reading my novel, but I began to hear something from outside. I couldn't hear it very well from inside, but I cracked open the one window in the cabin and heard the playing of a banjo from a distance. It echoed through the trees and the crickets were dead silent. Usually crickets are chirping, but all I heard was the banjo. A man's voice began singing from the woods. Hey there, hey there, don't lie to me. Tell me where do you sleep last night? In the pines, in the pines. Where the sun never shines. You shiver the whole night through. I closed the window, getting on my boots and my jacket. I then went outside and called out. Hello, is anyone there? I was only met with the banjo strumming in the forest. I then heard the man sing. He calls out into the pines, oh, it's the end of the line. Oh, the wolves, oh, the wolves. For blood they look. Better hide if you love your life. I heard howling in the distance coming closer. I felt my heart race and my breath become heavy. I then rushed back into the cabin locking the door shut before sitting in a corner by the bed. I looked around frantically, as I wondered if the wolves were coming. True enough, I heard barking and growling near the cabin. I could hear their footsteps on the dirt, circling the cabin. One of them was scratching upon the door. If I had to guess, there were probably four or five of them out there. Judging from the sounds I heard, more kept scratching, and now, they were barking and clawing at the door. I didn't know if the door would hold for much longer. Then, there was a singular howl that silenced the wolves, and I heard the pack all run off into the woods. I cracked open the window only slightly, and heard the man with the banjo sing once again. There's a man, there's a man called Bloody Ben, killed this dad on April 10. Better run, better run. Your time has come. You'll be six feet in his lawn. I know most people would stay in their cabin if a killer named Bloody Ben was coming after them, but this man somehow knew where the cabin was. I got out of the cabin and sprinted out running into the forest to where I couldn't see the cabin. Unfortunately, I couldn't see much of my way around either. I was in too much of a hurry to grab my flashlight from the cabin. The banjo music kept playing in the distance as I heard footsteps crunching leaves. I hid behind a thick tree trunk and saw a husky man holding a shovel. I heard Bloody Ben say, I smell meat. I need meat. I then heard another verse by the singer. In the pines, in the pines, Old Ben will fry and dine. On your innards, the whole night through. I tried to sneak away from Bloody Ben, but he heard my footsteps. Just like that, 
he started to charge at me with his shovel, letting out a deep roar from his throat. I ran away, passing by trees as I tried to keep my distance away from him. I needed to find my car and get out of the forest. It was stressing me out that I couldn't find my way around the woods. Bloody Ben was far away from me, but was still trying to find me. I heard his heavy breaths, his footsteps searching for me. That damn banjo was strumming still and echoing through the woods. I heard Bloody Ben say, I'll find you, piggy. I'll roast you for barbecue. I decided to make a break for it and run, hoping to find the parking lot. I already knew he was on my tail because I could hear the loud thumps of his footsteps running towards me. I sprinted through bushes and trees to reach the parking lot. Lo and behold, the parking lot was within sight. I rushed to my car and opened the door, slamming it shut behind me. I then pulled out my keys from my pocket, starting the ignition. I didn't even think when I pulled out of the parking lot and drove away, without any idea where I was driving to. I must have driven all night until it was daybreak. I only went back to the woods by noon to pick up my stuff from the cabin. I had to go back to the gas station to fill up again, meeting the same clerk. So, how was your night in the woods, camper? I replied, It was... alright. I think I had enough of the outdoors for now. The clerk chuckled, nodding. I got myself another bag of chips and some beef jerky. He then said, Did you hear the death song while you were out there? I shook my head as I didn't want to think about the night. I just wanted to pretend that everything was normal again. I went back into my car and started the engine as I began driving back home to New York. I swear I heard this, but it was on the radio when I was driving home. It was the same melody as the banjo. The man was singing, Someday, someday. Someday you'll die. I'll be waiting in those dark pines. You'll die alone on Railroad 5. A train passing through the pines. In the pines, in the pines. Where the sun don't ever shine. Won't find you for 30 miles. In pieces you'll lie. In the cold, dark pines. Oh dead, by 49.